Portland, Oregon gets an average of 37 inches of rain each year. Disconnecting downspouts to your yard or garden reduces demand on the sewer system and protects rivers, streams, and groundwater. For many property owners, downspout disconnection can be a low-maintenance option to move water away from building foundations and let it soak into the ground. The first step in your downspout disconnection project is to make a good plan. Planning your project out will ensure that stormwater from your roof soaks into the ground and doesn't damage your house or nearby structures. Not every downspout can be safely disconnected. Before you start, check your property's plumbing records to find out where stormwater from your roof already goes. Standpipes like this one may be directing water into the sewer system or into an underground drainage system. In the city of Portland, disconnection guidelines are designed to meet Portland's safety recommendations. If your property is in another jurisdiction, be sure to check your local guidelines for safe downspout disconnection. You should disconnect your downspout to a permeable area in your yard that is at least 10% of the roof area that drains to the downspout you're going to disconnect. For example, to drain 500 square feet of rooftop, the permeable area should be at least 50 square feet. Also, never direct water from a disconnected downspout over any underground system like a septic tank, oil tank, or drain field. And make sure the area that receives stormwater is at least 10 feet from any retaining walls. You need to make sure your downspout drains only on your property and that the point of discharge is at least five feet from your property line and three feet from a public street or sidewalk. Make sure the slope in your yard allows water to flow away from your foundation, but make sure the slope doesn't exceed 10%. You can check for slope by running water from a garden hose or a watering can and watching where the water goes. The water from your disconnected downspout must discharge at least six feet from a basement foundation. The water needs to be discharged at least two feet from a crawl space, slab foundation, patio slab, or masonry chimney. These are minimum distances. Be sure that the water from the downspout discharges where it will flow away from the foundation. Make sure your project doesn't create a tripping or slipping hazard. Avoid disconnecting downspouts where the extension or discharge would cross a walkway, gateway, patio, driveway, or path. Now that we've covered the basic guidelines, it's time to sketch a site plan. You can print an aerial view of your property from portlandmaps.com as a starting point. Mark the locations of downspouts and roof lines and estimate the square footage of your roof area. Map out areas in your yard downslope of structures where you might disconnect downspouts. And think about ways you can change your landscape to accommodate your disconnections. Downspouts can be extended underneath a deck or raised patio so stormwater can be directed to the right area. You might be able to remove paved surfaces like concrete pathways, patios, or unused driveway area. You could also replace pavement with pavers or gravel that allow rain to soak through. You can put plastic or concrete splash blocks, rocks, or large flat stones at the end of an extension to control erosion, help direct runoff, and add visual interest. For most downspout disconnections, you'll need a drill, a hacksaw, tape measure, a pair of needle nose pliers or metal crimpers, and a screwdriver or nut driver. If you have masonry, brick, stucco, or asbestos shingle siding, you will also need a drill fitted with a concrete bit to pre-drill the holes where you will attach the downspout. It's also a good idea to use something rigid, like a masonite or a plywood scrap, to prevent marring your exterior siding when you cut the downspout. When you finish planning your project and you've gathered your tools, make a list of the parts and materials you'll need. Downspout parts come in a variety of standard shapes, sizes, colors, and materials to fit your gutters. You can paint many of these materials to match your paint color or blend into your landscaping. Use durable gutter grade materials such as aluminum, steel, copper, vinyl, and black ABS SCH40 plastic. You can find all these materials in most hardware stores and home centers. You want to be sure your work stands up to time and weather. Never use corrugated plastic, also known as ADS rollout hose, PVC pipe, dryer hose, swivel or open trough materials. All these materials have limited durability. You will need to seal the sewer standpipe when you disconnect the downspout. Use a black plastic cap with hose clamp for plastic standpipes or wing nut test plug for cast iron, terracotta or cement standpipes. Most standpipes are between 3 and 5 inches wide. Estimate the diameter of your standpipe before shopping. 
If you're not sure just what you need, you might want to buy several sizes and then take the ones you don't need back to the store later. Now you're ready to disconnect a downspout. Disconnecting includes measuring and cutting the downspout, plugging or capping the standpipe, attaching the right combination of elbows and extensions, using a splash block to prevent erosion, and making sure materials are secured to existing structures. First, measure the existing downspout from the top of the standpipe and mark it at about 9 inches above the standpipe. You may need to cut the downspout higher depending on how far out you need to run the extension. Now we can cut the downspout and remove the lower part. Make sure to install the cap or plug right away so nothing drops into the standpipe. Use crimpers or needle nose pliers to crimp the metal at the corners. Don't try to bend or twist it. Now attach an elbow over the downspout. If we pull it up inside the downspout, it will leak. Remember that because this house has a basement, this downspout has to discharge at least six feet from the basement foundation. So we'll need about this much extension. We'll be using a splash block so you can count the total length from the house to the end of the splash block. Now put this together using sheet metal screws. You only need to use two screws per join. One on top, like this, and another along the side, like this. Never put any screws on the bottom of the parts because it will leak. Once you've disconnected your downspouts, your system will need regular maintenance. Properly maintaining your gutters, downspouts, and landscaping will help avoid a lot of problems. Clean your gutters at least twice a year and more often if you have overhanging trees. Check to make sure that gutters are still slightly tilted in the right direction to direct water to the downspouts. Caulk any leaks or holes and make sure the roof flashing directs water into the gutters. If you have any low spots or sagging areas along the gutter, repair them with gutter spikes or hangers. Check the downspouts and clear any clogs and elbows and bends. Make sure each elbow and downspout section funnels into the one below it and that all parts are securely fastened with sheet metal screws. The ground should slope gradually away from structures and soil. Keep bark dust or wood piles away from the siding. Also, be sure that water isn't draining onto impermeable landscape cloth or plastic weed blocks. Disconnecting your downspouts keeps stormwater out of the sewer system and helps keep our rivers and streams clean. So please keep your downspouts disconnected and keep your gutters, downspouts, and landscaping in good working order. And thank you for working with us for Clean Rivers. For more information, call us at 503-823-7740 and visit the Bureau of Environmental Services website at www.portlandoregon.gov slash BES. You'll find more stormwater management options, maintenance information, and other Clean River resources.